Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So, we're now going to start looking at objects that are connected by something like a rope. The first thing that I want to do with you guys is to draw a free body diagram for each object. Let's start with the 10 kilogram object. So remember, a 10, I mean a forced, a free body diagram, sorry, starts off with a dot. Now you look at all the forces acting on it. Well, we can see there's a force applied going to the right. It will always have gravity. There is friction. How do I know that? It says here that the 10 kilogram object has 20 newtons of friction. And so if this system is moving to the right, then friction will act to the left. And then remember that there's always a normal force, which is, well not always, but with an object that's on a table like this, the table exerts an upwards force on the object. Now there's another force that we haven't looked at yet. And that is the following. Think about this. If you've got a 10 kg object, that is being moved to the right. What is this five kilogram object doing to the 10 kilogram? Is it speeding it up or slowing it down? It's slowing it down. Okay, so then what are we gonna call that force? Well, what is physically touching the 10 kilogram object? It's at this point over here, it's the rope. And so the force of the rope, we call that a tension force. So if there's a rope, we call that a tension force. And so we're gonna call that FT. And so I've got two forces over here on my uh, free, free body diagram. And so that's all that we have for the 10 kilogram object. Now we're going to do the 5 kilogram object. So as always, we start off with a dot. Then we've got gravity. We've got a normal force. Now what is pulling the 5 kilogram to the right? Here's where students get this wrong. Well, I've seen it happen quite a lot. They say that the 100 newton is acting on the 5 kilogram. No, it's not, guys. It's not physically touching the 100 I mean, it's not touching the five kilogram object. Don't worry, the the system is moving because of the hundred, so it is affecting the five kilogram in some way, but it's through this rope of here. And so that's gonna be the tension force again. But now what is that rope doing to the five kilogram? Trying to speed it up or slow it down? Well, in this case, it's speeding it up. So we're gonna make it go to the right like this. And then obviously there's a frictional force. And so those are the only forces acting on that object. The 100 Newton force is not touching the 5 kilogram. That is very important. And so there we have it. If you understand this part that we've just done, that is the most important part that you need to know up till now. So now here's where it gets interesting. Let's say I ask you to find the acceleration of this entire system. Well, what you then do is you do, we know that acceleration we usually find from F net equals to MA. We're going to do that on both objects. So we're going to do two separate calculations. So let's do the 10 kilogram first. So we know that the direction of motion is along this axis over here. And so the forces that we're going to have to use are going to be FA, FF, and FT. So in the F net part, you're going to have FA, Oh, and we're choosing right as positive. Then we're going to say minus FT minus FF equals to MA. So the force applied is 100 newtons. The frictional force is 20 newtons on that one. We'll put that in the place of FT. FT, we don't know what that is. So we'll leave that alone. And the mass is 10, but we don't know the acceleration. So we leave that alone as well. Then we can simplify this a little bit. So 100 minus 20, well, that's 80 minus FT equals to 10A. We now do the same thing on the 5 kilogram object. So we say we know F net is equal to MA and we choose right as positive. Now what forces are acting on this one? Well we're moving in this direction here so it's only FT and FF. So we say FT minus FF equals to MA. The tension force we don't know what that is. The frictional force well that's they've told us is 10 newtons. Its mass is 5, but we don't know the acceleration. So guys, here's what happens. We've got two equations. Here's the first one, and here's the second one. Both of them have FT and A. See, there's FT and A. And so we do a simultaneous equation. And so what we can tip, and you can do this however you like, however you like to do simultaneous equations, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation down here, and I'm going to get FT by itself. So FT is going to be equal to 5A plus 10. Then I'm going to take that expression and plug it into the place of FT over there. And so we're going to end up with 80 minus, then whenever you substitute, just put a bracket, and that's going to be 5A plus 10 
equals to 10a. And now you solve. So it's 80 minus 5a minus 10 equals to 10a. And so we're going to end up with 70 is equal to 15a. And if you get a by itself, you end up with 4.67 meters per second to the negative 2. I could then go calculate the tension by plugging that answer back into this. And so the tension force would be equal to 5 multiplied by 4.67 plus 10. And so the tension force in the rope will be 33.35 newtons. So the tension force is the same in the rope. So it's, it's 33.35 newtons pulling this object that way. And it's 33.35 newtons pulling the object that way over there. And so that's how you do it guys. That's all I'm going to do in this lesson. When you have two objects and they don't give you the acceleration, then it typically becomes a simultaneous equation. All that you do is you draw a free body diagram for both objects and then you do F net equals MA on both objects. And then if they gave you the acceleration, well then you can easily calculate it, but most times they don't give you the acceleration and then you do simultaneous equations. And that's all. So in the next lesson or two, I'm going to practice a few of these with you. So thank you for watching.